Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we are going to be going over the same three things that we go over here on the channel each day. And those things include where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar. The next thing that we're actually going to go over is all the different collection sets and their current cycles. And then last but not least, we're going to go over all of the daily challenges, list form first, and then over them in extensive detail. So depending on which way... You guys might be wanting the daily challenges both ways will be provided but anyway let's go ahead and get started by showing you right where you can find madame nazar for today and madame nazar is actually going to be over in blue water marsh so your fast travel destination of choice will either be down in lara or it's going to be up in van horn either one will actually work out typically when i'm going to madame nazar in this location i do go through lara but that's just me either one should work just fine but if this is the only thing that you guys actually came here for today then don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated and honestly if you guys like these videos and you just really want to help me out leave a like on the videos and honestly it just really helps me grow here on youtube as well so spend that two seconds and like and subscribe down below more than 70 percent of you guys that watch these videos each and every single day yeah that's right you guys watching these videos right now are currently not subscribed what are you doing if you're here every single day looking at these daily challenges and something or whatever in this side of this video, why are you not subscribed yet? Show some support, hit subscribe, click on that like button, so we can go ahead and, uh, you know, we can bring that, uh, that statistic down a little bit. I would definitely appreciate it. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. And that is going to be talking a little bit about the daily challenges. Now, I've been, at, or been actually asked a lot of questions lately about... What do the collection what do the collection sets mean what are they so i'm guessing that those are a lot of uh, newer players so let's go and kind of talk about them briefly so if you guys are experienced and know what the collection sets are then by all means you might want to skip forward through this portion of the video anyway so the the collection sets have a possible outcome of six different like areas that they might be at for each collection set now i'm going to go over each of the collection sets or what, they're, what there are there's roughly about uh, nine of them i don't know if that's exactly right or not but roughly about that so each of those sets can be given it's like rolling a dice could be anywhere between one and six and basically what that cycle is what number you guys are going to want to look up either on my channel to find those specific ones you could use the uh the gene map or the collector map or you could actually find somebody else here on youtube that actually goes over each of those different locations uh, because those will give you exact spots of where to go for most things now this is slightly changed since a lot of those videos were created and a lot of the stuff on the map isn't even really there because it's not always guaranteed when you use the field shovel so if you're a brand new collector there's four collection sets that will not be hampered by this at all but the rest of them that use the field shovel which is the majority of them it's all but four sets will actually basically have a little bit of some issues with um getting what you're looking for now there will be a specific item in that area that you're digging up so if you're going after coins and you dig up that with that field shovel you are going to get a coin in that specific area but it's not going to be always the one that was listed or the one that you're hoping that you're going to get you might not have, you might on all of the collection sets you might not even get any of the ones that you're looking for because it is completely random you might get zero you might get five of the um same collectible now the most that anybody has ever told me that they've actually gotten in one day and it is completely random is seven of the exact same item so only some of the other ones are different and you know that's roughly 50 percent it's pretty high it's pretty unlucky but I would say that uh, you guys want, you can only hold the maximum of 10 different items of each collection in there. So you, I'd probably sell it down to five of each individual item. So that way you really don't have a problem picking up anything that you're actually looking for. Because, well, if you pick up something, you have already have 10 of them. It's going to show that you picked it up, but it's not going to be in your satchel. So therefore you wasted a collection spot and opportunity and you wasted your time. So just don't do it. So the next sets I'm actually about to go, if you guys have any further questions regarding that, then please ask. And if a lot of people ask me the same questions, I'll, I'll talk about it in previous or in the, one of the next episodes or whatever. But uh, I want to be able to help you guys out the best that I can. So the next sets I'm about to go over you do, that do require the field shovel 
are going to be completely random dig sites. So we got lost jewelry at cycle number one, arrowheads at cycle number six, family heirlooms at cycle number five, coins at cycle number four, and then fossils, which are going to be exclusive to the PS4 as of right now, are going to also going to be a part of cycle number five. Now, the next four sets that I'm about to go over, you don't even need to be a collector at all in order to collect them, but you do need to be a collector in order to sell them. So if you're not a collector and you want to collect these, to at least get a head start to make a little bit of money so that when you do purchase the collector bag, that you'll actually have a decent amount of money that you can turn in and sell to Madame Nazar. So that is perfectly fine. There's three sets of the American Wildflowers every single day. It's the only set that you can find more than just one. So the American Wildflowers are going to be a great opportunity and they're so abundant in the world but they're going to be a part of cycle number one tarot cards are going to be a part of cycle number two antique alcohol bottles are going to be a part of cycle number four and then the bird eggs are also going to be a part of cycle number four for today again if you guys have any questions please leave that down below all right let's go ahead and move on to the next thing and that's going to be going over the list quickly for the daily challenges then we're going to go over them in extensive detail we get the daily general challenges we got cooked Three season cooked venison, season venison. Three non-player enemies grappled to the ground. Five perch caught. One posse infighting completed. One shaky, shaky, and shaky. It's shaky. Missions completed. Five small bird carcasses broken down, and then one visited the peak of Mount Hagen. Bounty hunter roll. We got three bounty targets hogtied with the reinforced lasso. One hard or legendary bounty mission completed. Three or more, three more than one bounty target brought in at once. One Crypsis Special Camp Stew completed. We've got 15,830 distance delivery wagon travel on a mission. And then two goods sold to a local buyer. We got three arrowheads found. Three collectibles sold to Madame Nazar. And then three tarot cards found. Then we got Moonshiner. One completed special Moonshine recipe. Four Moonshine served to other players at a bar. One Moonshine sold with at least 18 bottles intact. Five animal samples sold to Harriet. Seven crafted or cooked at a wilderness camp, and then two legendary animal samples taken. Ooh. All right, you guys have the opportunity of earning 11 gold bars every single day. This is the best way of earning gold here in Red Dead Online. There is no other. Nobody will be able to argue with that with me. There is no better way. You guys want to try to earn 11 gold bars by just going after PvP and doing other things in Red Dead Online? Yes, treasure maps are a little bit different, but not everybody is going to get lucky in order to collect multiple treasure maps every single day it's it's possible treasure maps do get really good gold i will i will i will say that so but it's not the best way because it's a lot of time and energy put into it like showdown it's gonna take over eight hours to complete 11 gold bars worth of whatnot that's that's a lot of time eight hours a day to get 11 gold bars in, in uh, showdown modes anyway you can earn five gold bars from the daily general challenges and then six gold bars from the daily roll challenges. Daily roll challenges, in my opinion, are a lot easier. Here's the reason why. If you guys have all the current rolls purchased and be at least a rank 10 in each of those rolls, you're going to have access to 15 daily roll challenges. So you can pick nine daily challenges that are basically tailored to how you play Red Dead Online and then complete them. So you can basically forego six daily challenges every single day. You don't get that opportunity with the daily general challenges because there are seven. Everybody gets the same seven every single day. So if there's something that you don't like to do in Red Dead Online and that's a daily challenge for today, then you might not get the bonus. You're still going to get up to 0.5 gold bars per daily challenge that you complete, but you're just not going to get that bonus. If you're looking to get actually that five or six gold bars, that's the that includes the bonus portion of it. All right. So there is one real requirement that is to make sure that you have one completed daily challenge every single day for 21 days in a row and then maintain that going forward. Obviously, the more that you do each and every single day, the more gold that you have the possibility of making. So there is always that. And the other thing that I already talked about, which is be a rank 10 and have all the rules purchased, will definitely help you guys out as well. All right, let's go and break these down in detail. We got three cooked seasoned venison. Just go after the deer. This is going to be the best way of getting it. Deer pronghorn will give you venison and... They go pretty much everywhere, so getting uh, three venison should not be a problem. Now, getting seasonings are going to be getting oregano, mint, or thyme. And you can get those from pretty much anywhere. Pretty much anywhere but in northern Amberino, the snowy area, you can find those three items. If you go along the Dakota River Bank or River Bottom area, which is just south of Valentine, 
You guys can find a ton of them along the river, and I'm talking all of them. Time, oregano, and mint. There's a ton of them down in there. And you can also find a whole bunch of them right around Valentine as well. We got three non-player enemies grappled to the ground. Oh, one quick thing, you do have to go to a campfire and cook the with the seasoning and the venison together. You can either use your camp, your wilderness camp, or any of the town fires or any other fire that's around the wilderness. Three non-player enemies grappled to the ground. So basically what you want to do is you want to piss somebody off. Not a player, but an NPC. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. Um, if you don't want to hurt your honor, then find a bootlegger mission, a um, poacher mission, or a gang hideout. Because those are all enemies, and then just grapple them to the ground. Otherwise, start a uh, ruckus in either Van Horn or uh, Thieves Landing if you don't really care about your honor. And then all of them in that area will basically become pissed off at you, and then getting three shouldn't be a problem. If you don't care about your honor, Van Horn and uh, Thieves Landing are the easiest. Five perch caught. I'm gonna guys. I'm gonna give you a couple different locations that I go and get the perch. Um, I'm gonna give you probably three or four. Uh, Cattail Pond is one area right here. Uh, you can also get them from Lake Owangila. Pretty much from right in this area, right in that corner, right by the dam. You can also find them up here by the Winyard Strait area, which used to be almost exclusive um, salmon, but now it's a variety. And you can find them... Well, I guess those are, just, those are just the three areas that I go to. If you guys have other areas that you guys would recommend, um, I typically either go to Lake Oangela or I go to Cattail Pond personally. Those are my two go-to locations. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And that's going to be a posse and fighting completed. So you're going to have to basically be in a posse. So at least two people, you and a friend, or you just and another random player, as long as you kind of are on the same page of doing the infighting. And then this, start the infighting, whoever the leader is, start the infighting. And then once it's completed, it usually takes about four to five minutes. It doesn't matter who wins. It really doesn't matter. But just kill each other once each, and then you guys can do whatever you want. In that way, you can get that posse infighting completed. We got uh, Shaky mission completed. If you guys don't know where Shaky is at, then technically uh, he's down in Thieves Landing. So you guys will get to see where Thieves Landing is at today, just in case you don't know. Right there, where you guys want to go for him. Complete his mission, it'd probably take about 8 minutes. 8 10 minutes and you should be fine. Um, 5 animals, small animal carcasses broken down. So this is going to include bats, rats, toads, bullfrogs, um, squirrels, western chipmunks, crows, and any other small bird. Um, and then just break those down so you go into the side of your satchel and then basically hold the button that says break down on the lower uh, right hand portion of your screen. And then visited the peak of Mount Hagen. Most people probably know where this is at. This is the tallest point in the entire game, and it's going to be basically right there. Once you actually get about to here, this is uh, you'll get the credit for it. So it is cold up there, so definitely be prepared for that. Uh, have some either winter um, gear on you that you can put on beforehand. You will, your character will get pretty uh, pretty mangled from going up in that area. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, and that's going to be the Bounty Hunter rule, which is the only rule that does pay out additionally in gold. We got three Bounty tar Targets lassoed re with a Reinforced Lasso. You need to have the Reinforced Lasso anyway, or Hogtie with the Reinforced Lasso. Um, just my opinion, I should only be doing that. Uh, one Hard or Legendary Bounty completed. Hard if you want something fast and quick. Legendary Bounty if you want something a little bit more exciting. Doesn't matter which one you do. Then three, more than one bounty target brought in at once. I would recommend doing this with a friend. So the one person that you're doing the posse infighting with, see if they can help you with this one. If you guys are both a level like 10 or 15 or higher, you guys should be having the same ones anyway. So more than one bounty target at once, what you would do is you just go after two people and then basically put one on each of your horses and bring it back. Otherwise, you can bring your bounty wagon. You can kill both of them and drag one back with the lasso and putting one on the back of the horse or keep one alive and put it on the back of the horse. But whatever one you drag back definitely is going to have to be dead because you're probably going to kill them in the process. We got Trader Roll. We got one Crips' uh, Special Camp Stew. Whatever the recipe is, just cook it. If you guys are missing any of the ingredients, you can buy them from the general store, the catalog, or any of the stables. And then two goods sold to a local buyer. As long as you have two goods available at the camp to be sold, sell them to a local buyer. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes to complete. I recommend that you guys have a full 100, but if you don't, I understand. 
Oh, to rule, we got three arrowheads found. Again, arrowheads are going to be a part of cycle number six. Tarot cards are going to be a part of cycle number two. And then you have to have three collectibles sold to Mad Mazar. You're going to have to physically go to her location in Blue Water Marsh today in order to sell them. You can't sell them via the post office. It's just not how it works. The next on the list, the Moonshine Rule, we got one completed special Moonshine recipe. Uh, you just have to start it at the Moonshine Shack. Um, if that doesn't work and it's in progress, just wait till it's actually completed. And then you're going to get credit for that one. Um, it will use the Creek Plum Argarita or um, the Caribbean Rum um, ingredients to get that special Moonshine recipe completed. Or Moonshine, serve to other players at a bar. Again, this can be like a posse member or whatever. Or you, can, or you can just invite some random person into your bar and serve them some Moonshine. As long as you serve them four times... We'll get that one completed. Then we have one moonshine sold with at least 18 bottles attacked. So basically being as careful as you possibly can when you're doing that delivery. And last but not least, we have the naturalist rule. We got five animal samples sold to Harriet. Does not matter which five they are. It could be rabbits, whatever. Does not matter. Just any any five will do. Then seven crafted or cooked at a wilderness camp. Um, the wilderness camp is $750. If you guys have Twitch Prime and your Rockstar Social Club account linked together, if you have Amazon Prime, link it to Twitch, then link it to Rockstar Social Club, and you guys can get this completely for free. It's $750 savings, so do it. I recommend it. And you can set up your wilderness camp pretty much anywhere. Then we got two legendary animal samples uh, taken. I recommend doing the missions through Harriet. All you have to do is be a level 5. Otherwise, you have to free roam looking for the legendary animals, which might take a little bit of time. But that is all the daily challenges done, gone over, and covered. If you guys do have any questions regarding any of the daily challenges, by all means, leave a comment down below so that I can do my best to help you guys out. But if you guys did enjoy the video in any way, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. Until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.